What's up guys? Uh, if you clicked on this video, I'm gonna assume you know what this video is gonna be about, but just in case some of you guys just clicked on this for some other reason, uh, basically the, big, the quick summary is that a gig we did like a year ago, we're having an issue, and in the gig log, I said I was gonna explain the issue and the solution, and I'm just not getting around to doing it. Uh, so with that in mind, Let's talk about the issue. Um, essentially, the root of the problem was that we were, for our entire uh, like career, or the entire time we'd be doing anything with lights, we've always been just entirely ignoring how many lights are in a chain, like on one, just one string of lights. And if you're like more of a professional, or if you know anything about some like more advanced, or not even really advanced to be honest, but if you know anything about DMX, um, you know that you're only supposed to have like 30 fixtures or so that, you know, you'll see a few variables. Some people say it's 20, some people say it's like 40, but generally you're, not supposed, to, you're supposed to have a certain number of fixtures per string and anything beyond that you just shouldn't do. Because you run into issues where the signal won't reach the end because it'll just run out of power. Because like, ultimately DMX is electrical and it'll just run out of signal by the time it gets to the end. Uh, we weren't paying attention to any of that. This is where DMX splitters come in, which we also weren't, re weren't using at all because we were just stringing the whole thing together no matter what. And this became a huge issue when we were setting up for that gig because even though it was a similar amount of fixtures we've done in the past, some of them were generic, so I guess they were siphoning more power. We also had a lot of length between our different trusses uh, sections that were flown in different parts of the rig, like we had a lot, like 45 feet between some of these things, so there's a lot of, of time, a lot of length of cable for this signal to just run out of power. And you can kind of see this happening in part one, where you're, you'll, you'll see us kind of trying to troubleshoot this weird flickering that we're having on uh, the back piece of truss and some other lights, and initially we just didn't understand what was going on. So. We tried like plugging in certain lights, unplugging certain lights, and we ultimately did, unfortunately, because we weren't smart enough to think of our actual solution until later. We removed two of the PixMs from the rig entirely. We we're supposed to have like four of the PixMs horizontally, but because we had to remove two of the horizontal ones, or we thought we had to remove them, we ended up just removing all of the horizontal ones and making them all vertical. So we had 10 vertical ones instead of eight vertical ones and four horizontal ones because we're just dumbasses. And, uh, didn't solve the problem. So now, of course, we knew the problem was too many fixtures. We should've just got a splitter, which we did do later and we didn't use it because we had a different solution, which this is not the solution you should use <laughs> if you uh, have too many fixtures coming out of one string. But what we did was we realized that the signal was making it on all of the lights except for some of the pars on the back, the very back truss, and the lights on the diamond. Both of those are generic, but both of those have wireless DMX. So what we did was, uh, Isaac ran back to the office and got some transmitters. We unwired those lights on the back and the diamond and turned them on the wireless DMX mode. So essentially what we did was we took out some of the lights that were siphoning some of the DMX signal electrical power so it could reach all of the ones that weren't wireless and some of the other stuff on the side. This is why we didn't need to remove the pick sounds. We did anyway because we didn't realize it. And then we just used the wireless DMX on the back pars and the diamond, kind of like a repeater, kind of like a splitter, because once it reached the light that had the wireless transmitter plugged into it, it would fully power that transmission wirelessly over there and kind of boost that signal back up to the wireless stuff, which then would work fine. So you'll notice that ultimately in the end, uh, it was all working and it's kind of an interesting solution. I don't know if any of you guys have done this solution to fix your problem of not using a splitter and using like 60 fixtures or something on a line. Probably not because you're all smarter than that. And now we do use splitters. So we haven't had this issue, but I thought it was an interesting way we solved the problem, even though kind of a stupid way to solve the problem. But if some of you guys might run into this issue, maybe don't have a splitter, 
I don't know where you could apply this, but maybe in the future, me explaining what we did will help you guys out at your events. So that's that. Here's the video. Sorry it took 11 months to come out, but uh, there you go.